general relativity step by step. I've got an expression here for um, V. Let's get it right. Which way around did I do it? I calculated this chap here and then I subtracted this ABC minus ACB. So VA semicolon BC minus vector V, or covariant components of vector V ACB, which was equal to this monstrous expression here. Absolutely monstrous expression here. What I'm going to do is to factorize it. I'm going to um, factorize. I'm going to rewrite it a little in a little way. Di di x b d a c v d minus di di x c d a b v d plus. I'm just writing it down now. What I want to do is to extract a factor of v subscript d from each um, from each term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it down. I'm going to force that to be a D, but because that term E is summed over this one here, I'm going to write that as a D. I'll just, I'm just changing the symbols. So E is going to be called D, and I may as well call D E. I may as well just swap them over. So where's the D? It's there, which is turned into an E, of course, and it's summed with that one there. B is unchanged, A, C. Minus, and I'm going to do the same operation to this term here. Uh, D becomes E. A, B is unaltered. E becomes D, summing with that D there. Uh, that E is E and C. Yeah, that's right. It, it, it makes sense to write the summed indices in um, consecutively. So rather than just writing it down, just write the D and then ask yourself, well, I know that's a numeral index. I know I'm summing over that D. So what does it sum with? It sums with something downstairs. Where does it go? It goes here. Just a nice little trick just to keep track of what's going on equals and then of course I've got a VD here 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 and here so I'm just going to factor that out uh, so it's die by die X B D A C minus die die X C D A B plus Christoffel symbol E a C Christoffel D E B that's that term there minus Christoffel E A B just copying from here Christoffel D E C all times V D oops oh, it's up here I'm not entirely happy with this this interface here oh, this interface is enough to drive anyone nuts. So I'm going to call this formally R D. It's going to be summed over D, which is conventionally the last one. There's different conventions A B. No uh, no 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 no. I'm subtracting out, I'm factorizing VD, R, and I'm contracting on D, and on the bottom I've got ABC. And that equals VABC minus VACB. There we go. And this thing here is called the Riemann tensor. Riemann curvature tensor. Sometimes called the Riemann Christoffel. Riemann Christoffel tensile. Or sometimes the Riemann Christoffel curvature tensile. But again, there are different conventions and different sign conventions and different orderings for the indices. Uh, some people write it with all four indices down. There's a load of different terms. Um, different um, conventions. So I'm going to have to be very, very clear in the future, uh, in future screencasts, which one I mean. It's just a linear operator. See, we're just contracting on D, and it's just a linear operator. But you can see it's got four indices. It's a 3, 1 tensor, uh, which is a complicated beast to deal with. Um, and so it looks, if you're working in a four-dimensional space, just for example, you might be working in a four-dimensional space, 
you might think that the Riemann tensor with, with three sort of slots has got 4 to the power 4 equals 16 squared, I guess, equals 256 components. This isn't the case, because there's a whole bunch of symmetry relations in the riemann christoffel curvature tensor, which we can take advantage of. Um, and basically, uh, that's what I'm going to spend the next few screencasts talking about. I'm going to spend a long time fooling around with this Riemann curvature tensor. It's important because if it's a flat space, flat space tells you that you've got parallel transport, which tells you that the Riemann tensor, I, J, K, L, or whatever, units, whatever indices you want to go, is equal to zero. It's not entirely trivial to prove. But if it's a flat space, this thing is equal to zero. So the riemann christoffel curvature tensor is a representation, or it's a, a description of the curvature of the space you are considering. And I'm going to spend a long time talking about this. And I'm going to also spend a bit of time talking about whether or not that's the space that you're working in is actually embedded in a higher dimensional space. So I'll spend a bit of time talking about that, not from a rigorous pure mathematical perspective, but from a physics perspective. So there it is, the Riemann curvature tensor. I'm going to stop. Stop.